Good morning, everybody. As you're making your way in, um, can we go ahead and stand and worship this morning? Well, good morning. It's great to see everyone here this morning, and welcome to everyone that's watching online. Just got a few uh, quick announcements for you. This Wednesday, August 3rd at 6.30, there is a learning opportunity regarding foster care. We got a note from the host of this event that said, when it was brought to my attention that we currently have zero foster care families in the Clear Lake community, I felt compelled to do something. I want to invite you to a Foster Care 101 event where we can learn more about what our local needs are and debunk some of the myths. Foster care has been a sort of buzz topic since the recent Roe versus Wade decision, and there is no better time to educate ourselves. You are asked to please RSVP to this event on the St. Francis, St. John's Facebook page. Again, this is uh, Wednesday, August 3rd at 6.30 p.m. at St. John's Catholic Church here in Clear Lake. And then also, uh, today is the last chance to sign up to help see our crew in our city at the Minneapolis headquarters for a packing party, and that's going to be on Saturday, August 6th from 9 to 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is an event to pack backpacks for school supplies for any inner city children, and there's a sign up at Sign Up Central. And then also, on August 28th, we will be having a church, church at the Clear Lake Park. After this service, we'll have a baptism service. So if anyone's interested in being baptized, uh, let uh, Pastor know, and, uh, and we'll go from there. And then check out, there's lots more announcements in your bulletins. 
And if you'd like to give to the ministry of United Covenant Church, or if you have any prayer requests, there's that brown box in the back, and just all those prayer requests do get prayed for. There's a group that meets on Tuesdays, and they will pray for you for those prayer requests. Not to interrupt you. Are you are you done with that, Matt? Okay, sorry. I I just have to do this before I forget. Um, Sue Spurl called and said thank you uh, to everyone that was able to help with the camp, um, camp, the parking at uh, the fair. Thank you so much. Um, tomorrow morning, if anybody would like to, and if you're available, they are going to at eight thirty in the morning. They're going to take the um, some of the things out of the parking lot, like the, the posts and, you know, just clean up stuff. So if you're around at 8.30 tomorrow morning and are available to help out, um, that'd be appreciated. And then um, the other thing is that they're missing four walkie-talkies. So sometimes people accidentally take them home. So if you did that, check your car and just bring them back here and we'll get them back to the fair. So that's it. Yes, thank you for everyone, for everyone that helped out with the fair. Um, and then just uh, sign your attendance books, and you can stand up and greet your neighbor. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are finishing up those conversations, um, you can head back to your seat. And all kids, or if you feel like being a kid, come on up. Come on, kids. I see you all like, do I want to come up? This is an easy one. You all know this one. Yay. Woohoo. All right. So we are bringing back an old favorite for our kids' song today, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. I'm going to help you with the, um, the, the actions, okay? Adults, we've been, been doing very good, but sometimes they need help, so be good examples. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, baby, let my people go, huh. Okay, even if you can't do the motions, all of you can go, huh. It better be loud, okay? And then Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, let my people go. There's a few other ones. Feel free to follow along, and we will clap sometimes. Um, you can throw in a Go Moses every once in a while. You'll hear that, too. So this is just a fun one. Have some fun with it. Just the other day 
heißen. As we move into our next song, um, we did theme it a little bit today. So we were talking about Pharaoh um, and the deliverance of the Israelites. And this next song is called Egypt, and it's talking about how sometimes we have our own Egypts that we are um, kind of enslaved to sin or things like that, um, and how God will deliver us. So I hope you just enjoy this moment of um, worshiping about that. for the freedom that we have today to come together to worship you, to learn about you. God, we just start asking for um, open hearts as we come into the message today. God, give pastor the words to say um, and just bless us as we go through our door week. Amen. All right. Good morning. 
Uh, so we had a few of our students in the last couple of weeks that have been off doing some fun things and we wanted to share a little bit. Um, so we had three of our teams go to LIT or Leaders in Training at uh, camp, so at Lake Beauty. Um, they're gonna share a little bit about their experience and then um, I think we have a couple of our Unite people here this morning. Um, so if you went to Unite, if you wanna come on up um, and they're just gonna share a little bit about what they learned and one of their favorite parts of their trip. So here we go. Hi, my name is Simeon Kreck, and I went to LIT over a couple weeks ago, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. It was life-changing, and for any of you that have an opportunity to go to LIT, I highly, highly recommend it. It was amazing. I learned so many things. Like, we had three types of classes. We had uh, theology, and we had spiritual formation, and then leadership, and I think my favorite was probably spiritual formation because there was a lot of you could just feel the power of God's presence in all of our sessions, and that was awesome. I'm Carter Carlson, and I also went to LIT, and uh, LIT is like, it's like one of the best places to go to, like Sim said. If you ever get a chance, just go. It's like awesome. And um, if you ever need to like meet some of the best people you'll ever know for your whole life, just go to LIT. And, um, yeah, uh, the first week, it was two weeks. Uh, the first week, it was a combination of the, the seminars, like Sim said, the three classes. And then we also did, like, student, or not student, uh, servant leadership type stuff with, like, cleaning and helping out serving meals and stuff. And then the second week, we were, like, cabin buddies with the cabins. And it's, like, the cabin leader, but secondary. And, um, and that was really awesome, too. And I also got baptized the second week. Hi, I'm Clara Dietrich, and I also went to LIT. Um, like what they said, it was like the best thing that I've like ever done in my entire life. It was so much fun, and all the people there were, um, they're absolutely amazing. They, I got so close to them in just not even two weeks of being together. Um, they were like the, some of like the closest friendships, and like we went like so deep together. Um, and I already miss them so much, like they're so amazing. But um, I kind of like realized like this is like what, like this is what the church is supposed to be like, how we were all there for each other and um, kind of like uh, we just, we were so real with each other and we prayed for each other and um, it just kind of made me realize like this is like, this is the kind of like friendships that I should be, that I should be this kind of person for other people. And these are the kind of friendships that I need in my life. And um, it's not like the kind of thing that, you know, you go and you learn a bunch of good stuff and then you go home and you go back to normal and you forget about it. Because I've had a lot of things like that too. But I've already, like, I've already um, got to, like, apply so many things that I learned. And it's, like, so easily applicable. So, like, it's already, like, completely changed my life. Even though it might not seem like it on the outside, Inside, I am completely different, and I'm so glad that I got to go, and yes, I would definitely recommend. Hi, I'm Reed, and I went to Unite, and I'd like to thank you guys for donating so we'd be able to go. Um, honestly, I had, one of my favorite parts was worship team, uh, because uh, it actually made me really happy that I looked around, and there's so many people just raising their hands in worship, in that there's like so many teens that is like they're uh let's see <laughs> yeah they're uniting in Christ <laughs> and um i also like the skate guys they're really funny <laughs> and I agree with Reed, it was really fun. Uh, the speakers were really good, and they had some really good messages. I don't exactly know how to end. <laughs> so, um, uh, sorry, I just lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, it's all for me. Uh, um, but yeah, it was really fun. There's the concerts with uh, 
the uh, Colton Dixon was fun and the uh, other guy who was also one of our speakers. And yeah. <laughs> Braden and I found a lot of goats. Um, Bethel, part of Bethel campus, they have like goats that wander. Um, so not like spiritual at all, it was just cool. And so we went and walked around and found the goats a couple of times. But um, on a serious note, just hearing, I didn't get to, to join the kids at LIT, but I was at Unite and it was really powerful. It was really amazing. And just to hear um, some of the life transformation that our students are going through, um, and if you need to be inspired in your faith, and I think I've said this up here before, but hang out with the teens a little bit. Ask them what God is doing in their life. Um, they have been one of the biggest sources of inspiration for me to just dive in and learn more because they ask questions and they want to know things. Um, but I can't speak more. And uh, one of our speakers at Unite said this, and I really liked it, but he was like, the church is not, uh, this young generation gets a lot of, of bad negative press. Um, and some of that's true, but there is a whole group of them that are just committed to Jesus and committed to the church, and we see our youth group just like that. So I just hope that you are um, spending some time with them, but also thank you. Um, we had a lot of scholarships that allowed these students to do that, so thank you for helping us out with that as well. Oh. Always almost forget one thing. Um, this was just a bonus announcement, um, and thank you to Jim and Cindy, but because there's a lot of us going to be gone and it's going to be hot, they are doing a bonus lake day this week, this Wednesday. So instead of crew hangout being at church, it will be at the Moorlands again, and I will send that email out. Morning. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel 17, 41 through 47. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but now with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. The second is from Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for, it is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Thanks, Matt, for reading that. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to give everyone an update on the uh, youth director position. As you know, about a year ago, Zach uh, uh, was called to, to be the youth director at uh, a church in Uppsala. So this last year, we haven't had, or we, um, Emily has graciously filled in and helped out the youth uh, with that position, so we thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to give an update on where things are at with that. Um, about a little over two weeks ago, Pastor and I had the opportunity to uh, meet with a candidate, and things went really good. We asked him some tough questions and wanted to know <clears throat> his thoughts about, you know, the gospel and in the Bible and 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 his uh, faith and um, and things went really good and of course Pastor and I wanted to hire him on the spot but we couldn't we needed to go through the process so last Monday we the leadership team got together and we interviewed this candidate and again asked him some hard questions and uh, and spoke with him and heard his testimony and um, after the the interview, you know, the leadership stayed and, and discussed what the ne next step would be. And we decided that we would um, offer him the position. Um, and uh, he accepted the position. So I am excited and happy to announce that Josh Williamson will be our new youth director. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so we're excited to have him on board, 
and uh, keep him and his family in your prayers. I don't think Josh is here, is he, um, today? But many of you know him, and uh, keep him in your prayers as he's uh, going through this transition and uh, in this new position. So I just wanted to let everyone know the update on that. Thank you so much, Matt. And um, boy, there's a lot going on, isn't there? But um, another thing that we're doing today is we have the privilege of um, sending out a missionary. And Tirza Dunham, who is the granddaughter of Jim and Cindy Moreland, um, is, is heading out into missions. And it is really... An exciting time for, for Tirza, and I'm just going to have you share just a little bit, Tirza, and, and then we're going to have a prayer for her. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Tirza Dunham, and I just finished my sophomore year at Bethany Global University in Bloomington, Minnesota, and it's a missionary training school, so I'm studying Bible and theology and intercultural ministry studies, um, and this year... Well, next Sunday, I start, um, I'll leave for North Africa to intern under missionaries that have been church planting and studying Arabic for the past 10 years um, within that local community there. Um, and this country is 99% Muslim and just in desperate need of the church. Um, and they've already been seeing visions and dreams of the man in white, of Jesus himself. And so I'm just excited to go over there and partner with the things that God is already doing um, and just show them more of the man that they've already seen. So um, I have a table in the back if you want to ask some more questions or would just like to sign up for my newsletters to be praying for me. I am fully funded, so praise God for that. Um, so thank you for everyone who's already partnered with me financially or spiritually. I'm just so thankful for that. Amen. And, and also just about the giving part. of If you feel the Holy Spirit um, leading you to give to Tirza, um, she, she will. She can share with you how to do that. Thank God, she is fully funded. But you know, every bit helps when you're a missionary. So, um, but we're just so thankful that God is raising people up to go out into the world. As, as Tirza said, ninety nine percent of the people in that country are Muslim. I mean, that's that's crazy. That we can't imagine that. They need the gospel so much, and we're just so thankful for courageous people like Tirza that are that are that God has called. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna invite you to stand where you're at, and once again we're going to just just extend your hand in blessing as we pray for Tirza, Heavenly Father. We just praise you so much, God, for the privilege of having Tirza even in our church today, and. And God, we thank you for calling her. We thank you, God, that you've given her a vision and that, you have, that you're going to fulfill that vision for her. And God, you're going to use her powerfully to, to help people, and especially uh, women that have been um, abused in, 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 in human trafficking. And she's going to be helping and bringing the healing of Jesus Christ and the gospel into that part of the world. And so, God, we're just privileged that we can pray for her. And so, Lord, you've already provided so much of what she needs. But, Father God, may you continue just to pour out your Holy Spirit. And over the next, uh, I think it's, what, 14 months, I think, that, that she's going. And even next week as she flies to France and then to uh, North Africa, Father God, we pray for complete safety in all the traveling and in all the adjusting and learning Arabic. And there's so many things that are going on in her life. God, just anoint her powerfully. And she's already a blessing. And God, just pour out a blessing on her and through her that she's going to be a blessing where she goes to, Lord. And she's going to be like a, a little, you know, sunbeam there, Lord God, that that she is just such a blessing. So God, Holy Spirit, come in power and just guide her every step of the way. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Teresa.
So good. Okay, well, we're, we've, so we're just going to um, just say one more prayer here and, and just continue in prayer as we did. Um, Amy Pickard is at the Special Olympics, and, she ha- and so she's asking us to pray for her. She, um, Dolly, I'm understanding that she got first place in, in the javelin, so... God bless her, you know, and, and, and she's traveling, so we're going to pray for safety for her again. LIT, if you didn't know what LIT is, it's Leaders in Training, and it's that program at Lake Beauty that we're just so thankful for the way that God touched our young people at, at um, LIT and at Unite, and, and we're so thankful um, for Emily, you know, she, we only hired her, I think, for 10 hours a week, but she's like a superwoman. So I don't know even how she does it, but <laughs> she's like <laughs> amazing, you know. And, and, and be in prayer for Emily, too, this week as she is taking a van load of, of youth right after church. We're praying for safety and a blessed time. So let's just pray that. Father, we thank you and many things that we could have continued to pray about today, and we just lift all those things up to you. But God, we're thanking you for this past week, for the fair, for safety, and as we finish up, Lord, just bless our our folks that are out there today, and, um, and thank you, God, that it's gone so well, and we give you the praise for that. God, we thank you for Amy. Bless her in Jesus' name. And um, thank you for the victories that she's been enjoying there at the Special Olympics. Help her. She's traveling. Keep her safe. And Father, we pray safety for our youth, for Emily and the youth as they go to to Lake Beauty for Senior High Camp. Bless Bless this week. May it just be a wonderful time of growth and encouragement and salvations and and um, discipleship and so we just lift that up to you thank you father and um, again thank you for the programs that the youth have been enjoying with lit and unite thank you jesus all these things along with so many other things help our nation and just continue to move among us in jesus name amen amen praise the lord so this morning when i woke up um, one of the first things I saw was um, I saw myself on my knees and reading a scripture. So um, that's what I'm going to do right now. So this is from Philippians. It's a wonderful scripture. This is Philippians chapter 2. And it says this, it says, verse 5, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name that is above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise God for that, huh? Praise the Lord. And we just give God the glory for his goodness. And every knee will bow, every tongue confess. But, you know, that one song we used to sing a long time ago, um, Come Now is the Time to Worship. Some day, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those that gladly serve you now. And isn't it wonderful to serve the Lord right now? This is an exciting time to be alive and to serve God. The Lord is opening up doors 
for the kingdom of God to advance. And we just praise God for that. I'm telling you, it is exciting. God is so good. Okay, so um, anyway, Israel, the nation of Israel, that God, um, when you when you study the, and I've been really blessed with our Bible 101 class that we do on Tuesday nights, and it's kind of, you know, refreshing my, you have to, hey, the best way to learn is to teach, right? So, so um, but as we look at the Old Testament, and we look at how God um, raised up wonderful leaders, godly leaders to lead his people, and we think of Moses, and Joshua, and um, so many others, you know, that uh, Gideon, and Deborah, and you know, we think we could go a whole list. There is Samuel, you know, um, people that were filled with the Holy Spirit, and we could go on and on about that. But, but when we get to Samuel, and if you go through the Old Testament, if you get to the book of Samuel, you know that Samuel was the last leader in Israel that was um, considered a, a judge. And a judge was someone who, um, they weren't a king, but they're kind of a prophet, and yet they're a military leader, and you know they're kind of a combination of things. But when Samuel was old, the people of Israel said, we want to have a king. We want to be like other nations. We want to have a king that will lead us into battle and go before us. And, and, and so God told Samuel, he says, okay, you, you can anoint a king for Israel. And, and so, um, so God led Samuel to go and anoint a man from the tribe of Benjamin, whose name was Saul. And um, Saul was really an impressive man. I mean, he was, the Bible says he was about a head taller than everybody. He, he was, you know, tall, dark, and handsome. You know, if you, if you saw a group of men and, and Saul was there, he'd go, oh, that guy's the king, you know, because he just looked like a king. And, and he had this, and, and more than that, God anointed him to be king. So he was he was a mighty warrior. And um, and sure enough, in his the early days of his kingship, he went out in power by the power of God and, and led the nation as they fought their enemies, and God gave great victories and success to Saul. But sadly, as time went on, Saul began to be selfish. He, began, he stopped listening to the Lord, and he started to kind of just go off and do his own thing. And so God was grieved that he had anointed Saul to be the king of Israel because he was starting to disobey and, and doing wrong things. And, and so God said, he said to Samuel, he said, Samuel, um, uh, Saul's dynasty will not continue, okay? Um, so I'm going to seek out a man after my own heart who will replace Saul as king of Israel. And so um, God sent old Samuel to a little town called Bethlehem and to a man named Jesse. And one of Jesse's sons would be the, anointed as the king of Israel. And so Samuel got there, and, and Jesse brought out his sons. And the first son was, was a man named Eliab. He was the oldest. And again, he was an impressive specimen. You know, he was, and, and, and Samuel thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed, this guy, you know. But God says, no, I've rejected him. He's not the one. Um, Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so the next oldest, he looked, and no, not him either. Not, and the next one, no, not him. And, and he went through seven of the sons of Jesse. And Samuel said, God hasn't chosen any of these. Is this all you got? And Samuel, or old Jesse said, well, I've still got my youngest, but he's out watching the sheep, you know. And Samuel said, go get him. And so the youngest one came, and it was David. And David came in, 
And the Lord said, anoint him. He's the one. Again, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. This is a man after my own heart. And he's going to be the one to be to lead Israel. He's going to become the king of Israel. So Samuel anointed him as king. And the Holy Spirit came upon David. Now David did not become, he was anointed as king, but he didn't live into that reality for quite some time. It was, I mean, he was still really young. He's probably, we don't know, 14, you know, maybe 13. We don't even know. He was, he was young, okay? And, and he didn't become king for, again, years and years. But um, so his life really wasn't probably any different for a while, right? But, um, but David's older brothers went off into Saul's army, into the army of Israel. And they went to help Saul fight, a ba- fight, fight their enemies, these people called the Philistines. And so some of David's older brothers went to fight with King Saul against the Philistines. And I'm just going to read this because the Bible says it way better than I can say it. So here we go. This is um, verse 20 of chapter 17 in 1 Samuel. It says, So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him, because Jesse wanted David to bring some supplies and so forth to his brothers. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, facing each other, army against army. Okay, so... um, now, I've not been to Israel, but apparently there's a, there, well, there still is there a valley called the Valley of Elah, and the Philistines were on this side of the valley with their army, and the Israelites were on the other side, and they're facing each other, okay? By the way, this had gone on for 40 days. They'd been lined up against each other. They're kind of stalemated at this place, and... Uh, It says, soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. Okay, so sometimes in ancient warfare... Um, an army might send out their toughest guy and they'd say, okay, here's our toughest guy. You send out your toughest guy. They're going to fight it out and let's get this thing started, you know. And so Goliath was coming out. By the way, Goliath was just a freak, okay? The guy's over nine feet tall. He's just a monster and super strong, you know, and, and he's shouting, Uh, defying the armies of the living God. Okay. um, As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The man asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempt from paying taxes. Boy, that would get me going, I tell you. uh, David asked the soldier standing nearby, "What, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. But when David's old oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the men. He was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now, David replied. It's like a, you know, a younger brother just... I was the younger brother, so I know how this is. Okay, I, don't know. I was only asking a question. He talked over... He, he, he walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's questions, question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Okay, so for 40 days, 
nothing had been happening, right? King Saul and his army are petrified. I mean, they're just... And now, all of a sudden, Saul hears about someone who actually kind of wants to go fight the giant. So here's a little break in the action, you know. And, and the truth is that who should have been facing Goliath? Well, it's the guy that's supposed to lead the army of Israel, right? The king. I mean, he's a head taller than everybody on his, you know, in his army. Like, now he's nowhere near nine feet tall, but at least he's the biggest guy they probably have. And, and he should have been out there. He had the anointing of kingship. He had the Holy Spirit. Why wasn't Saul going out there? Well, um, so, but he hears about this kid that's saying this, and Saul sends for him. Don't worry about the Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. Um, when a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and, re and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord, was, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail, David put it on, strapped, on the, sword, strapped, strapped the sword over it, <clears throat> and took a step or two to see um, what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. And plus, they're probably way too big for him, right? Um, I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed with only his shepherd's staff and the sling, he started to cross the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield-bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the name of his gods, names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. I mean, what would it be like to have someone who's nine feet tall saying that to you? It'd be scary. You know this? I mean, because really, Goliath probably could have literally just ripped him apart with his hands. You know, <laughs> like he was huge. But David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking a stone, um, taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down to the ground, on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and put pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn along the road from Sharim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. 
David took the Philistine's head to Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. As Saul watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I really don't know, Abner declared. Well, find out who he is, the king told him. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul and the, with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David re replied, his name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem. Okay, so Saul wanted to know who David's father was. And here's the truth. David's father was a nobody, <laughs> really, like Jesse from Bethlehem. Oh, it's not ringing a bell in my mind. You know, Saul's probably thinking, like, who's that? Well, I mean, I shouldn't say he's a nobody. Everybody's somebody in God's sight. But just to say that, that uh, you know, he was not, it, Saul probably expected maybe some famous warrior or something. And, and really, the only thing that made David special was not the family he was from or his background. It was that he had the anointing of God, right? And, and the power of God was resting upon him. And David was just a, he was a normal kid, you know, but he had this relationship with the Lord that made him into someone truly great. He was a man after God's own heart. Now, David is a type of Christ, which means he's a foreshadowing of Christ. He's not Christ. He's the ancestor of Christ. I mean, Christ is physically descended from King David, but David gives us a picture or a, a preview of some of the aspects of Jesus Christ. And, and when David um, is, is doing his thing and fighting the giant and having victories, it gives us a picture of Christ's victory over Satan. And um, so David... You see, he had this relationship with God. He had this anointing upon his life. David understood that this wasn't just a normal battle. David saw that with Goliath, there was a spiritual element to this battle. And see, Goliath was defying the armies of Israel. And it was believed at that time that, that um, every nation had its own gods that they worshipped. Now, the nation of Israel was the only nation that had the one true God. And so when Goliath is taunting and defying the armies of Israel, he's defying, really, the God of Israel. And, and he's... He, he's making fun of God, and he's making fun of God's people. And David was realized that this Goliath, he's walking on thin ice. He's, he, is, um, he might be physically all there, but he's about ready to fall because you don't mess with God. And... And so um, David's like, why are we allowing him to do this? Like, who's going to put an end to this? This is ridiculous. He can't, he can't talk against God. You know, like, who is he? And let me at him. I'll go. I'm just a kid, but I'll go take care of him. And so David recognized that there's a spiritual element to this. And when we face things in our life, I don't want to spiritualize everything, but let's face it, for, for a lot of things that we face, the enemy uses, sometimes will use situations to really taunt us, right? And he'll, he'll come at us and say, uh, there's no way you're going to make it over that one. That's too big of an issue for you. You're, you're, I'm going to defeat you, you know, or, or whatever other lie he wants to tell. And, and he uses these things the devil um, is the accuser of the brethren, right? But Jesus Christ 
is greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Praise God for that. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Praise God for that. So um, now David saw Goliath differently than Saul saw him. King Saul also had a kingly anointing, okay? He had been anointed by the Holy Spirit. But Saul was seeing Goliath through eyes of flesh. When he saw Goliath, all he saw was a nine-foot monster guy that wanted to rip someone apart, you know, and he's like, I'm not going out there, you know, somebody else do it. And that fear just spread throughout the whole army, right? Nobody wanted to do it. And fear is like, a disease. It just gets in there, and the devil uses fear as a weapon. But praise God that, you know, so many times in the Bible, the Lord says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. You know, all these promises. God doesn't want us to live in fear, but in victory. And so, so Saul saw Goliath through eyes of flesh. David, again, saw him through the eyes of the Spirit. And David is like, there's just no contest here. That's a crazy way to think, really. It goes against our flesh, but the truth is that there's, no, that there's nothing in life that we face that is greater than the Lord. Is that true? There's nothing that we face in life that's greater than God. Because God is above everything. He's more powerful than anything. He's more powerful than any situation. There might be a situation in your life that you go, there's just no way that, that this can work. Well, you know what? God has a plan for it. And the crazier the thing, God's plan is even bigger. Praise God for that. So, um, okay. David knew that Goliath was no match for God. God had brought victory before in David's life, and he was going to do it again. And I'm just going to read this one little section here again really quickly. 1 Samuel 17 and verse 34, David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Okay, so again, David is a foreshadowing, a type of Christ, right? And so David is a good shepherd. Who's the good shepherd? It's Jesus, right? So, um, so as we read this, you think, okay, picture this. Some um, teenager out there clubbing a lion or a bear to death with a club? That guy's crazy. I would be, I'm out of here, man. You know, I, don't, you know, I, I care about the sheep, but, you know, I'm not going to die doing it. Is it worth it? But, you know, David, I don't, does anybody here know anybody that's killed a lion or bear with a club? I don't, you know. <laughs> that's amazing. David was already doing amazing things, right? He had this relationship with the Lord, and he was already doing amazing things. And God was just going to add to it. And so, um, so David, he looked at the, his past, and he saw, you know, God helped me with that scary situation. Here's another scary situation, and God's going to help me with this one. And that's a strategy that we need to use in our lives. That it, as you walk with the Lord, as, as, you know, as you continue on your journey with God, just remember those times in the past where God has helped you. And he's, he helped you then. He's going to help you now. Different situation, but guess what? Same God, same power. Same God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Praise God for that. And he's going to help us with whatever it is that we're facing. 
And David had this history with the Lord of not fearing and of, of knowing that God can handle it. David ran to meet Goliath. You know, so much about this is so counter to what we would do. But he didn't, he wasn't like, okay, there's the giant. He's running out. He's like, oh, I'm, let me at him. You know, I'm, oh, I'm going to get this guy. And he, he, he runs after him. And you know what? That, that's such a testimony to us. If you got something in your life, you're like, that's it, devil. I'm after you now. You know, get out of here right now because I'm coming after you with the power of Jesus Christ. Not my own power. Do you think David, a you know, 14-year-old kid, could come on, nobody's going to beat that. You know, he's not going to beat Goliath. But with the power of God, he did it. And with God's power, we can face anything in life. There's no situation that's impossible with God. With man, you know, with God, uh, what's that scripture? Nothing is impossible. Somebody else can remember where that's at, but um, it's true, right? Praise the Lord. David had an intimate relationship with God. That's something that Saul didn't have. Saul had the anointing, but he didn't have that close relationship with the Lord. And that's what's really the most important. And I'm all about spiritual gifts. And I pray for them. But you know what? You've got to have that relationship with the Lord. Because that's the thing that's most important. And that's what David had. He, had, he was a man after God's own heart. And he spent time with the Lord. And he knew him. God knew David. David knew God. And... So that brings us to our last verse that I'm going to read. I'm reading all these famous verses today. They're so easy to preach on that I just took the easy way out today. So it was fair week, right? So, but it's good. I just love these passages. Psalm 23. This gives you the heart of David, right? The Lord is my shepherd. David knew what it was like to be a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, or even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God for that. So last verse, um, like David, you know, we, we might think of ourselves as Kind of like Saul might have thought of, you know, David's from where? Bethlehem? Like that dinky little place that, whose dad is his, Jesse? Never heard of him, <laughs> you know, but that might be us, right? We might be somebody that we might think of ourselves as, and, and it's good to have a humble, <laughs> you know, we're not to be like, oh, I'm better than everyone, you know. God, the pride cometh before a fall. But, you know, so, so it's good to have a humble attitude. But here's the thing. As we are children of God, and, and God can take someone who's a nobody and make them into somebody. God can do it. All we've got to do is draw near to the Lord like David. And God's going to use us for special things in his world. We're with wherever we're at. So James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And as we do, God will give us that faith and that love and that hope that, that come from him because he's the author of life. So let's just pray as the team comes forward. Father God, we say thank you for David, 
that even though he was just a young guy, Lord, what an amazing walk he had with you. That he was able to, that God, you used him to do miraculous things. And Lord God, we're just really blessed by that today. Thank you. And God, as we go into our lives with whatever it is we face or whatever Goliath we might face in our life, God, we just want to just proclaim right now that you are above that and you're greater than that. And Lord, you're going to, you're going to help us. You've helped us in, in the past. You're going to help us now. And you're going to help us in the future. And we give you the thanks and the glory for that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us as we worship.
So um, if anybody would like prayer for anything, just encourage you to take advantage of that. And um, you can always put your prayer request in the little box there. But receive some prayer today. I think it's out that door there or down the hall. There's a prayer room. And I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Okay? Whatever your thing is, get prayer. That's a whole nother sermon. Maybe it's the same sermon. I don't know. But anyway, get some prayer, and um, I think that's all I have to say. So let's just have the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you.